All-American Air Meet at Miami, the ninth annual tournament to thrill the Southern Resorts guests. And of course, the meet gets off to a flying start with a thrilling takeoff right from the top of an automobile. Next, the crowd thrills to the stunting of a huge tri-motored ship with the best yet to come. And here's the piece de resistance. It's Earl Stein, the Batman, who goes aloft 10,000 feet, spreads his bat-like wings, and soars and stunts through thin air. It's the dream of the ages, man flying with his own wings. But Earl can do it, and with all the grace of a bird at that. There's only one thing a bird has on Earl. While the Batman could land, of course, but not land and live, he has to open a parachute while he still has the altitude. So when he's tired and begins to drop lower, he sails safely to Earth with a thrill under his belt that few men have experienced. And that doesn't include me. The great American public has its say at the pole. And the result is a Roosevelt victory of amazing proportions. All races, creeds, and complexions, in village, town, and city, contributed to the president's 11 million plurality. At Hyde Park, New York, America's number one voter gets a great ovation as he comes to the town hall to cast his vote. There's drama in the air. The drama of a day that will go down in history, breaking election records that have stood for more than a century. On the arm of his son, Franklin Jr., the president has to go through the same routine as you and I, identifying himself by name. Franklin Lee Roosevelt. Now, it's the name, please. Franklin D. Roosevelt. Franklin D. Roosevelt, number 312. It's a serious moment with the president. Wonder if he dreamed at the time what a walkaway he'd have. His voting's news. But what of his vote? No one will ever know, for he won't tell. But there are 25 million and more boasting today that they voted for the next president. And while this drama unfolded in New York, another was enacted at Independence, Kansas, the home of the Landon family, where the governor's household ballots went into the box before an admiring throng of well-wishers and hometown friends the grim, energetic leader of a lost cause. The rising tide of Democratic ballots swept with a roar to the president's Hyde Park home by mid-evening in a rousing red fire gathering of his local supporters. Next four years, the worst part of the emergency being over, I'll be able to spend a little more time in Hyde Park. <laughs> But it was in Times Square, New York City, that a jubilant democracy staged its greatest victory celebration with a million lusty-throated rooters whooping it up, a demonstration greater even than the false armistice jubilee. And they kept it up, hour after hour. But now for the payoff. Most election bets were in cash, but some are different. And Fifth Avenue, with all its machine-age traffic, gets the laugh of the season out of an over-ardent Landon supporter who finds that the horse and buggy age was not what it's cracked up to be, even with a charming cabbie doing the whip cracking. Sunflower prognosticators, some of them, drew the longbow. But this young man is drawing, by long odds, the heaviest election bet of the day. And it's not in pound sterling, either. Yes, sir, when you pick the wrong horse, it's liable to be a horse on you. And so for another four years, Franklin Delano Roosevelt will be at the wheel of the ship of state. His unprecedented personal victory may well be an all-important milestone in the history and progress of our nation. <laughs>